Zimmerman with Upper Creek Angler, and we're tying through Steve's Goose's book, Grayling Flies. This is fly number 58, the pink poison. Deadly little bug, and um, I am a huge fan of metallic pink beads. We have a saying down here in the, the south of the United States, which is... Um, don't use it, they don't work. And that's a signal to all anglers or all hunters or basically all sportsmen of any kind who are thinking of um, of using this or that, that um, hey, that, that actually really works. So I, I often tell people who ask me about pink beads, uh, oh no, don't use them, they don't work. Meaning they, um, they are a sure fire fish catching machine. The um, tailing material on the pink poison is Coctelion fibers. So we'll tie in a um, sparse pinch of these and run our thread back up to the, the top of the hook. This is a very thinly tied fly, so we're not going to um, do much of anything to create a taper. The visuals that I have of the fly are um, of a very sparsely tied bug. The ribbing that we're going to use on this is some um, very thin silver wire, um, almost a tinsel if you have that. Tie it in on either side of the hook and run your thread back up and just cover up the, the tinsel that you tied in. Bring this thread right back to the top and counter wrap your tinsel. break or snip that off. The original instructions for this fly call for um, splitting your thread. That is that is not something that um, I particularly enjoy doing so you can achieve the exact same premise by um, tying in a dubbing loop. The collar on this is going to be some feathers, feather barbules from a CDC feather. So I just strip them right off, pinch them in, and um, give my dubbing loop spinner a spin. And um, now I'm ready to wrap these guys over. I, I know people who struggle heartily with dubbing loops who have absolutely zero issues splitting thread. And then there are people like me who just never got on the thread splitting train, who grew up with a dubbing loop spinner, and um, I can spin up a dubbing loop quite quick. So we'll go in and we'll trim a couple of these to suit us. Um, I, I didn't create the fly, so I don't really know what the um, the originator's intent was, but I wouldn't personally want any of those feather barbules to extend past the body of the the fly and obscure the look of the um, the tail. So we'll reach in with um, some zappa gap for our last whip finish. Um, this is one of those flies that I think it's really critical to apply your head cement to your thread because the last thing that you want to do with these really precious CDC feathers is to gunk them up with head cement. So I'm, if you um, will get in the habit of tying your whip finish off by lacing the the thread with your head cement. You'll get it exactly where you want it every single time. So again, this is fly number 58, the pink poison. 
fish pink beads. They work. Y'all have fun time.